I think it just broke my heart that you said when I want to add on to my beauty, right? Mm. And it's just stuff like that that I don't think we realize that we say because it's like, why is why is that adding on to your beauty? Do you know what I mean? The Kitty Perm Girls, um, they came out and said, because now they're grown, mm -hmm. and they came out and said those styles that we had on the boxes of these Kitty Perms were, I think they got silk presses. Yep. They didn't actually get relaxers. Mm -hmm. But a lot of little girls' motivation and their mom's motivation was to look like the little girls on, on those the box. boxes. Mm -hmm. wow. How did y'all feel about finding that out? Yeah, that was award? a Twitter thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. I'm hearing it. Yeah, they, were, they didn't have perms. Yeah. I am heartbroken. Yeah. Because what? perms make people hair come out and everything. Mm. Wow. All this time. Hair when burning in the like, chair. I used to, when I used to get relaxers, I would find the prettiest girl in the box. Mm. Mm. Like, I wouldn't just try to find a certain brand. I would look at the picture. Yeah. yeah. It ain't never come out like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, it, it brings me to an interesting place. I think a lot of times, especially in our community, we talk about daddy issues. Let's talk about mommy issues. Oh boy. Oh god. <laughs> what what pressures what insecurities do you think your mother's instilled in you? Mm. You talked about doing your hair and being tender headed and, mm. and putting in the in your mind that yep, my hair I mean. is a problem, mm -hmm. is unmanageable. Mm -hmm. How do you what what do you think they put in you and how do you think it's affected you into your twenties? Okay, so I can say that um like, my mom actually used to do my hair. Then she started to get, like, have someone um, start doing it for me. So when she got tired of doing it, she started to pay somebody to do it because it was no longer her niche or was no longer something that she wanted to do because either she couldn't manage it or she just didn't want to deal with it. But as I begin to get older, it starts to be a problem with me because this is who I am. So now I have to find a way or a source or somebody that can do my hair. So that's where I come in with learning how to do my own hair. Now, now I'm at this stage where I finally learned how to do my own hair and how I want to manage it and what I want to do with it and finally learning the fundamentals of black women and their hair. Like, we don't just wear weave because we want to. I mean, not because we have to, but because we want to. Like, it depends on the mood and it depends on who you is as a person. It depends on what, like, I got to get my hair this certain way because I have a photo shoot. It depends on what business you in, what what ventures are you taking off to. It more expands to, like, so much. Like, do you wonder why women get their hair done a certain way when they go into a certain place? Like, mm -hmm. you might want deep wave, body wave, because you finna go to the pool and you know it could get wet. Or a woman to get braids because it could get wet. We get our hair done because... We 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 can have a silk press as a black African American woman, and then we go to the pool, and then we get out the pool, and it's just curly all over our head. But I don't know why we don't find beauty in that. We have right. to. That's where I finally found beauty. And well, right now I'm not wearing my natural hair because I don't know why. It's not a cuz. It's just I'm just not right now. But occasionally I do when I don't have a lot going on. I don't know why it's been that way, or how. I actually take it in to finally realizing and having this conversation is actually a beautiful thing. Just who you are as a woman. It's, it's beautiful the way that we're able to transition. I like the transition to be like, oh, I had this hairstyle, then I can do this hairstyle. But it's beauty because I have other race friends who's like, who's not black, white, or I have a Korean friend. I have a Latino friend and she wishes she can have my hair. And sometimes I wish I could have hers, you know. Mm -hmm. But as a black woman, my Korean friend can't get the hairstyles that I get because her hair is too soft mm -hmm. or she don't find beauty within what she have and want what we got. Mm -hmm. So it get deeper on different levels between in like how you was really surrounded and what you actually taking in. Like right now I'm reaching levels where I'm unlearning the things that wasn't taught right. So that's where it comes like, am I really tender headed or was you just putting too much pressure on my hair at the time because you couldn't manage it? So now this shit hurt because that's right. why I don't like getting my hair done. Right, right, right. To your point. Yeah. So it's like, damn, like my mom used to like, girl. Be frustrated. <laughs> yes. Like our parents drill certain things in our head. 
Like you ever you ever seen a kid and the mom is always like, "Girl, he's so bad," but the baby not even bad. And then he turned out to be bad because you put that on him. Or like she's so tender headed. And you become Maybe it was just you like, rough. Was too heavy. Maybe it was just too heavy. And you rough. But we hear things as kids and they say it and we drill it in our heads and we just believe it. Mm-hmm. Like my mom used to always tell me like, "You crazy or you you want to be crazy?" But no, I was just dealing with mental issues like I just wanted to be heard I wanted to be seen yeah that goes and to the to point where she level. made me actually feel like I was mm. crazy when I really just needed counseling I just needed somebody to talk to Therapy. I was lost and I needed to be found but you just kept saying I was this I was that so that goes to say like how you was raised parents do to Differently. help us in these areas not what men can do, what women can do, but what can parents do? See, that's because something it starts thing, with I them. It mm-hmm. all starts when you're a kid to when you're growing up, but it always starts with what you initially learn or what you initially took in. And not everything you learned was correct because right. I'm unlearning a lot of things that's not right. And I was just like, wow, I can't accept the fact that I was raised this way. And now, after all these years, I'm trying to unlearn it because it's not correct. It's not right. Or mm-hmm. like... When I do have a child, nothing is perfect, but I want you to be taught different the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to have to hide my inner beauty. I want to bring it out a long time ago. I shouldn't have to wait till 20s. What about the teens? You are beautiful as you begin to grow older. Like, it's a journey. It's not something that's just settled, but just always, always goes down to, like, remember who you are and opinions don't matter. And also, like, do your own research. Like, your parents can tell you something, but... I have a nephew who's like 100% on top of his stuff, and he's 10. He'll correct you wrong in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Like, no, that's not right. Like, this little dude raised himself. Like, he know, like, you can't play with him like that because it just it really depends on how you was raised and what right. you encounter yourself with. Re, can you restate the question? How do you feel like mothers specifically affected our self-image, especially as women? Or y'all self image is women. Mm-hmm. You know what's crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking about random stuff. You know how you start yeah. connecting the dots with things. Mm-hmm. And so, like, one of the things that my siblings and I have always been kind of complimented for is that we've always had long hair from mm-hmm. a young age. And I was having a conversation mm-hmm. with my mom, and it was something like, oh, yeah, you guys have good hair. That must be like the white side of you, right? Mm. And in that moment, I was like, I definitely corrected her on that, by the way. If y'all wonder, I'm like, hold on, wait a second. But then it's things like that that make you wonder, just kind of growing up. And it's like being always asked what you're mixed with or having other black men come up to me and be like, you just black? Are you sure? You too pretty to be black? Like stuff like that. And so I think that some of the messaging that I've gotten from my mom um, or just other people as well is that if there is something good about my beauty people question it if it's blackness. It's attributed mm. to something else. Yeah. Like, mm. you can't have hair like that because you black. Right. Like, black is black is not beautiful, so it must it be mixed with something. It has to be something, something else. Mm-hmm. It's wow. unbelievable it to, to be... you for this standard of beauty, something that you perceive as beauty to be just black. But the question is, why isn't black beautiful? Why isn't it beautiful? Who said it wasn't beautiful? Okay, Malcolm. <laughs> okay, Malcolm. I'm just saying, like, we got to, for real, we got to put our foot down to understand that mm. it's beauty between everybody. Like, we're all different for a reason. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Like, you can set yourself aside from the crowd. Like, why do you feel like you, like, when we piggyback off, why do you feel like you got to be this it girl? Why is black not beautiful? You are beautiful. Your skin is beautiful. Your hair is beautiful. Your tone of voice is beautiful who you are naturally is beautiful we have to remind people that they are beautiful because some people are in a dark space and feel like their black is ugliness we shouldn't feel that way like you are beautiful just be you be free and do what exactly what you believe in because a lot of opinions don't matter like love the skin you in and embrace it and bring it out more like learn your inner self i feel like that's what it all ties down to as growth mm-hmm. So let me, let me get y'all's like advice. Okay. I have a daughter. She's two, okay. but she's about to be two. Her mom and I are trying our best to get her in the mindset of I am 
beautiful, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> I think technically her hair is for B. I'm for C because I'm African, but I think it's for B. Looking back at some of the places that you guys can identify that it went wrong for you as far as your own self-image from family, friends, the whole night, what do you think I should keep in mind doing to make sure that when she grows up, when she's 20, 30, she feels beautiful just off top? Wow. Honestly, I say this all the time. You really have to let kids be kids because you can tell a child all day long, do this, do that. You can teach them, teach them, teach them. But that kid is going to do what they want to do when they get older. Like, my mom taught me everything I need to know. My dad taught me everything I need to know. But when I got older, I did what I wanted to do. Mm. I can say. You done? I'm sorry. Well, I did what I wanted to do, but I found my way when I figured out. When I figured it out on my own. You got to allow people to figure it out on their own because they need that journey. Mm. Because your journey is going to teach you so you can te- you can give her stuff and she'll use it. She might not use it, but all you can do is the best that you can, and not put too much pressure on yourself, because she's gonna figure it out on her own, and she might not grow up how you want her to grow up, but she's gonna grow up. But God got her. Yeah. So don't don't worry when it comes to kids, because God is gonna take care of you. Do the best that you can mm. as a parent. And give the rest to God, because that kid is gonna grow up. She's gonna remember what you what you gave her, mm. but she's also gonna learn new things along the way. She's gonna find found out. She's gonna find out what's for her, what works for her. But she'll always remember what you taught her as well. Mm. Mm. So to piggyback, I can say like, um, as you being her father, and some things that I wish I had in my father, like reminding me of my beautiness. And since she's two, you can also teach her like when she's re- begin to write. Write out affirmations. I am beautiful. I am brave. Mm. Reminder, when she looks in the mirror, have sticky notes around her room and let her write it out like I'm brave. I'm beautiful. I love the skin I'm in. I wish I had that. And I'm finally learning to actually, I'm on my self-care journey right Mm. now. So I'm finally learning all of this of the things that I didn't know before or what my parents didn't teach me. So I can give it to my seeds and my kids can give it to their kids. Like, you are beautiful. Love the skin you in. Enjoy your alone time because there's going to be days like that's dark and you don't know which way to go. You know what I'm saying? So it all gets deeper about what you was taught and just like just to always remind like I'd be trying to think of things to always remind her that she's beautiful besides like the affirmations and the sticky notes um as a dad take her to her hair appointments let her be comfortable like my dad like my dad likes my hair give her compliments remind you have to constantly remind mm-hmm. a woman that they are beautiful that is important just so, randomly in the middle like you're beautiful like, and I love you you look pretty today sweetheart I'm, it's gonna be toxic <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> but let me let me show you this. This is my daughter. Mm, I thought that was like an art. No, that's her. Oh my God! Oh she's my so God. beautiful. Her skin Hi, is so honey. beautiful. So oh the reason I, I show y'all this is because I think she's gonna be cute when she grows up. I don't want her to feel like she's too cute. So like, what's the balance of you're beautiful, but you know what I'm saying humble yourself. Mm. What's the balance mm. of always remembering where you come from? Mm. Like I'm trying to think. It's always important to. Be humble, but mm. then it's just like mm, somebody else can be Like you're that. rooted? Yes, remember mm. remember who just you are. Be, I, I would say just be careful about how you carry yourself. Because if she look at daddy and daddy is like, you know, this cocky guy, she's going to just <laughs> I'm she's gonna know. <laughs> it's not our fault. I know, y'all are very cocky, but I would just say <laughs> she said that calmly. Y'all are very cocky. Now that you mention it, um, I would just say kids pay attention to everything. Kids remember, they know, they know what you like. Right now, she probably be looking at you, even though she's real young. She probably still be catching on. So I would just say be very careful about what you do around her, mm-hmm. and don't show her that cocky side of you. Try your best to be humble, and she'll follow that. Because you gotta be all transparent. She got right now is what she sees. Mm. Her parents do. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> yeah, we ready? At me. I can feel them. Um, I mean, I think one thing to keep in mind is that when we're children, that's where when our brains are the most malleable. Mm-hmm. And so, 
a lot of times kids are making connections with things without realizing it. Like I was saying before, when my mom did my hair, frustrated, like pain. So those are connections that I tied to my hair. Mm-hmm. And so I think that you just have to kind of be intentional about making those connections subconsciously for your daughter. Um, so going back to the first question, what she can do to embrace her beauty. Um, I would say when she's doing her hair, have her look in the mirror, like whoever's doing her hair, say affirmations, make it a positive experience. So maybe after she gets her hair done, you guys go do something fun together or something. So then her yeah, hair days become something so she looks forward to, right? Or like with my dad in terms of like the humble, the balance and things like that, his nickname for me has always been beautiful one. So he's always called me that. But he was always at my award shows. He did things to help cultivate my mind. He used Being to make present. me read out loud to him, things like that. And so that showed me that, okay, education, intellect, those things are important as well. And so I think we got to be careful because I think what happens a lot is that if women aren't getting a lot of guidance at home, um, being taught self-love, but then we go out into the world and we're noticed for our appearance, we do focus too much on it. And so I think it starts very young with helping her understand. There's other things like beauty is cool, Mm. but there are other things that you can cultivate within yourself. And those are the things that you should be proud of because genetics made you look this way, but but who you are inside is what you work toward every day. Yes. Mm. So quickly, if you can explain to men what protective styles are. And and the reason I ask is because as most men, I wasn't a fan of wigs or weaves or, you know, certain hairstyles Mm -hmm. until I started understanding hair and black women's hair and it not being as resilient to the elements. And that's why you might wear weave or you Mm -hmm. might wear wigs to maintain what it is that, you know, you have or not have to, you know, your arms go dead trying to, you know, do twists or whatever the case may be. So explain to black men why it is that you guys wear the braids, why it is that you guys wear the weave, outside of trying to be the it girl, like the um, utility to these things and, you know, some of the bundles we have here. I would say, like, for the most part, I love just wearing my real hair right now. Like, I'm not really weaving it right now mm. just because I don't, I just feel so free. Like, I can just... Weave it alone. I don't know. <laughs> Weave it alone. <laughs> so it I'll alone. say the reason that I do wear, like, bundles and wigs and lace fronts is because it just, it just looks so good. Like, mm. if I want to just change it up and look pretty... Even though, even though I'm pretty like this, if I want to just look even better, like add on to my beautifulness, add on to my beauty, I'm going to put on some bundles. They're going to be nice, soft, and slick. It's just going to feel like a new person. Like, I just genuinely want to wear it because I want to feel good. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I, can't, I can't. I think it just broke my heart that you said when I want to add on to my beauty, right? Mm. And it's just stuff like that that I don't think we realize that we say. Because it's like, why is why is that adding on to your beauty? Do you know what I mean? I just feel like it look good. I well, don't know. Okay. Not that I don't look good like this because I'm, I feel like I'm very beautiful like this. But if mm-hmm. I want to do it up, I'm going to put on some bundles and put on some makeup. Okay. Let me ask you like this. I know, for instance, <clears throat> if my daughter told me that I need to add this to be pretty. It would break my heart. I'm not saying you got to add it to be pretty because mm. I'm already It's an enhancement. Pretty, but it's just enhanced. Even that. Even that. Even like, because to me what it's saying is that in order for me to be my super saiyan self, my optimal self, I have to use something outside of me. So I would, I would understand from a, you know, once in a while thing or from a um, protection thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But from a I feel prettier thing, that that hurts a little bit. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying you're prettier with this. I'm just saying, like, sometimes I just want to wear it because it's pretty. Because I like it. I feel like you like what you like, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I like my natural hair, but I also like weave because it's pretty. I it's like, like the a way style it, switch up. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a style switch up. I like the way mm-hmm. it look on me. I like the way... It lay. I like the way I like. I like it because it's soft. I like it because mm. it's pretty. It's just pretty for me. 
but then but but again, I don't wear weave a lot. So it's sure. not like Sure. You feel me? Yeah. Like it doesn't make me more beautiful than I already am. That's that's what I was that's what I was trying yeah, to clarify. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, okay, it's, okay. I'm a natural girl all day long. Like I I don't need weave. Mm-hmm. But if I do wanna feel prettier or I want to feel like I want to look good, mm. then I'm going to put on some weed. But you do see, like, in our community in particular, a lot of women don't feel pretty until they put on the weave or right. put on the makeup or put on the outfit. Mm. You yeah, feel that's, what I'm it's different when you feel like you need it because you're not pretty natural. And that's mm. the whole thing. But it's different reasons why women wear weave. I can say that. Okay, talk about it. Like, my reason is because it's pretty. I like it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And another woman reason can be because of the length. It's longer than her natural hair. Mm-hmm. Or because of her natural hair don't get as straight as the bundles. Or think about the curl patterns. Like, yeah. you you have your natural beauty in your curl pattern, but you also want a, a body wave because it, it flows different. So it's not just the... Color, and that's another thing, the color of it. Mm. Sometimes it's, we'll get to the color. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, so that's the thing. It's difference between dyeing your natural hair as a black woman than getting 613 bundles and dyeing it. Like I'd rather mm. not dye and bleach my natural yeah. hair because it doesn't turn out the same that's when you go point. back. So it that's all depends. Point. Weave is not a bad thing. It's actually right. can protect our black, natural, beautiful hair. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't dye my black, right. beautiful, natural hair because I love my curl pattern that I have. So I'm wearing weave because it's a protective style. Piggybacking off what you said, why is it a protective style? Because my hair is growing up underneath. I have braids. So the braids tightens up the hair and pulls it from the root as it begins to grow when I'm not stressed. Okay? <laughs> so, I feel you. Yeah, it, it gets deeper with... That's a good That's a good ass point. Why yeah. we do the things we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I want my hair to grow, I'm going to put I'm some braids in. Weave. It's going to be braided down. It's going to grow. And it's less to maintenance. It's less to maintenance and maintain. Just wake up and go. Yeah, exactly. It look good. <laughs> she keep coming back to it. It looks look good. good. Like, oh. We all love a bust down middle part. Mm. It just look good. But, but some girls love a curly, a curly wave. Some girls just like they six thirteen. That's their natural state. Or is this gang them. talk right now? What is six thirteen? I don't know. Six thirteen is blonde hair. Six thirteen. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So it's blonde bundles. It's yes. blonde bundles. Okay. Okay. Six thirteen. That's just the number preference. I'm learning. You know what a bust down is? You know what a bust down middle part? Oh, a Rolex. Uh, like real sleek when the girl got the middle part and it's just like bust down straight just 30 inches straight. plus okay that's you a think, bust uh, down what you think you think you like you say you don't like me Actually, that's what we're gonna get to I want y'all to I'm, I'm gonna try my best to represent the male delegation okay uh, so y'all ask me questions about women's be- or men's perception of women's beauty hair the whole nine okay I'll do my best to be honest okay so go ahead I got a question. Come on, Robin. Go ahead. We ready. All right. So, when you see a woman who primarily wears makeup Mm -hmm. uh, just to go to, like, the grocery store or run errands, do you see that woman as insecure? Yes. Why? Why is she insecure? Because she has makeup on. I'm going to give you two answers. Number one, I would say that she is hiding something, especially if she's doing all that just for like mundane tasks. Like she's hiding something. So at the core, she might not like herself. And that reflects in how she covers up who she is, a.k.a. her skin. Right. Um, On the other hand, hand, I would also like ask what her skincare is like, Mm -hmm. because wearing too much makeup, I've been told like could mess up your skin clog your pores or the whole nine mm-hmm. especially if you make a habit of like I can't move without wearing makeup yeah. um, and then like the other thing too I guess this is the third answer <clears throat> it would make me feel like she's high maintenance I can't take her to hike or go to a beach mm-hmm. or you know mm-hmm. th- do this this and that because she has to be on a certain way uh. all the time and uh. I, it ain't gonna work for me another dude might be different but for mm-hmm. me it ain't gonna work yeah I, I like that. So you're not feeling alone. I agree. Yeah, I like I like natural, clean beauty. That's that's how I put it. Not even natural beauty, clean beauty. Yeah, clean natural, soft, beauty. yeah, calm, mm-hmm. womanized. Keep them coming. I was gonna wait till everybody else got a question because keep, keep them coming. Dang, I got some questions. I, think I got a question. Like mm-hmm. anything in general that we want to know about me. Mm-hmm. 
And if you can relate it to what we've been talking about, that yeah. would be best, yeah. Hair beauty. Oh, I got a good one. Wait. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So how do y'all feel when... So you know how, like, a black woman, when we wash our hair... Yeah. It get, like, real nappy. Mm. It don't get nappy. It get curly. It get curly. <laughs> it get real curly. Mm. How do you feel about that? Because I always feel... I have not met a man where I can wash my hair in front of him mm. because my hair get real crazy. <laughs> you look like it shrink up really. You get real, real mm. bad up in here. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I gained a lot more empathy for what women go through when I grew my hair out, and I had to wash and detangle and do things like that because I think men, if if you don't have that experience yourself or you haven't had to do nobody's hair or whatever the case may be, you think it's easier than it actually is. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it might be harder for a lot of men to empathize with. Why do you look so crazy? Because I've been getting Caesars my whole life, so you don't know that your hair shrinks up after you wash it. Yeah. Right. Right. But I think I would encourage more women to educate, especially if it's a dude who really cares about you, loves you in the whole night. Educate him on like what's actually going on. Yeah. You know, have like him that. help you. And he can kind of learn and gain an appreciation for what it is that you guys are going through. But then again, if he love you, he love you. Mm-hmm. you Facts. So you will love me with my hair. This Facts. way or this way. Facts. Looking crazy. Mm-hmm. And if he's only with you for, for your hair, you might not want to be with that <laughs> young man. Like, yeah. He might like me. Uh, but <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. That's scary. Mm, I'm trying to think about what my question is. It's got to be good. Oh, I got another question. Go ahead, roll with it. Well, I think. Okay. Well, you might not be able to answer this, but when your girl want hair done, or if she want to wear weave, you do you offer her to buy it, or does she have to ask you to buy it? Like, where does that come from? When women be like, "I need my hair done," or "I need my nails done," or "I want this wig," I need an install, mm-hmm. and they expect. I feel like women just expect men to just pay for their hair. Like, girl, get your own hair done. I don't. I don't think a dude who who has it would mind. Um, I think he would mind if it becomes excessive. If it's like you're switching your hair up every two weeks and you're using like premium honey hair level, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Top notch. But if it's if it's like once in a while, once a month, or whatever the case may be, I think that's reasonable. I think I think men can pitch in to a woman's self care routine, self care process. And if it if it makes you feel good and not just it gives you confidence, but like it makes you feel good because your confidence has to be rooted. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with it. I'm cool. Yeah. Do you I'll offer like in. for your girl, do you offer her like Hey, here, babe. We'll get your hair done. I've 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 paid for my woman, my women to get their hair done before. Um, have I bought them hair? No, but I've given them money to buy hair. Um, like offered it or they had to ask. Maybe they, I mean they would because I don't know like when you're about to go do the stuff. So I'm I'm not just gonna off the top of my head. You know what I'm saying. Um, but and 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 that's why I also wanted to have this conversation because because there are men who are in women's lives and they want to best understand their woman and best help their woman. And I know, honey, hair, we're we're talking about doing some kind of like you know Valentine's Day special. So that could be. I'm sure most women will be like elated <laughs> if you got this level of hair um, or this quality of hair uh, for your woman for Valentine's Day. But I, I I really do want just like I'm having conversations with women so men can get a more in-depth and nuanced understanding of how women's minds work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, beauty, hair, makeup, stuff like that. We don't necessarily have to understand everything, but like now I know what a bust down, I know what a bust down is. <laughs> and a 613. And, uh, yeah, 613. <laughs> um, but, but, but yeah, I'm, I don't think if he offers means that he cares. I mean, he, he loves you or cares for you anymore, but like if he's willing to meet a need that you identify to him, I think then, yeah, he, he rock with you. I like that. I got a question. I ain't got no question. Bonnets. Okay. I want to talk about bonnets because I asked this question to my friends recently, and I'm like, when you talk to a guy and you stay over his house, Mm -hmm. when do you back out your bonnet? Because for me in the past, 
I've dated someone and I would literally have my hair get messed up because I was so insecure about wearing a bonnet in front of him to the point where he asked, he was like, you don't be wearing it to cover your hair. Yeah. Like, you're getting your <laughs> hair done. Like, why are you no, not wearing a bonnet? And then I feel like it was okay. But I realized that's a thing. So when you guys see a bonnet, mm-hmm. what How is your you interpretation see? of that? <sighs> because, but when does the bonnet come out? Right. <laughs> like how you reach that? Right, right. Once the you have to be comfortable by right. that time, right? That's that's a good point. I'll, I'll I'll say this: before I grew my hair out, I didn't get it. Like I would wear a do rag, but I was a dude. You know what I'm saying? You wear do rag to the basketball court. But I think most men we associate bonnet with like our mom. Okay. Until <laughs> until like you have an understanding of like maintaining hair. So I know like. Men who are high level in their pimping, they'll just get like satin pillowcases or silk pillowcases mm-hmm. the whole night. So you don't have to wear a bonnet. But, you know, somebody like me who's had hair, I get I get it. I get it. Yeah, put put your bonnet on, you know, protect yourself. <laughs> um, but, yeah, most, you know, most men just don't know. And they just, like I said, they're just making that maternal association. Um, it depends on where you're going Oh no, we're not. Going oh no, outside we're, we're not talking about going outside. No, we're we're talking outside about it in the, in the house. Like, <laughs> yeah, where, where your man? Yeah, yeah. I have a question though. Okay. And I don't know if this is a tangent though. So a bonnet reminds you of your mom. Mm-hmm. What is the interpretation of your mom that would be off-putting for your woman to have remnants of her? Um, it's it's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> when you say your mom, though, is it mm-hmm. like? you don't find her physically attractive. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Or is it like, because some people, like some women might say there are some men that they look for that have traces of their dad. So I guess mm-hmm. that's more of the long lines I'm going up. Is it just the physical aesthetic of it? Or does it trigger something else? Like you remind me of my mom and there's something else. I think it could be both, honestly. For me, when I'm saying it, it's the aesthetic. Okay. It's the aesthetic. I think it's the same reason I don't like wigs. Because you would see like your mom, especially, you know, Middle aged, older black mm. women, they got their wig, they come off work, they just snatch it off, put it on. So I and then you even you remember how it smells, you remember how it looks, and you're like, I don't wanna be thinking of my woman the same way I okay. would think of my mom. Mm-hmm. Um some men, some men it could be like um <clears throat> um they still have like a maternal wound. Okay. And they have trauma from their mom and they don't they they're going the complete opposite way. So I don't want my women to be anything like my mom because of the the trauma piece. But I for me it's like, you know, if you're trying to get unhorny, you think of like an old woman. <laughs> you also think about like your mom, your dad, your brother, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't want to be able to think about anything that is related to me. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> if I'm trying to be in that t- type of mood with a woman. Okay. So, would you have sex with a woman in her bonnet? I have. Do you get turned off? Do you think about your mom? Wow. That's a good question. <laughs> wow. That is a good ass question. Um, before I understood bonnets, it didn't help me. Like it didn't make me. You know what I'm saying? But now that I understand it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't affect me. But it's, it was about the understanding piece. Right. You gotta mm-hmm. understand each other. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We all different, you know? Yeah. Shit, I mean, it's 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 been women who didn't like me wearing my do-rag. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm a dude. You need a do-rag. Mm-hmm. We need our bonnets. Right. We what about our scarves? scarves? I wear my scarves. I, pref- I would say this. I prefer a scarves scarf over a to a bonnet. Same. Yeah, I got scarves. Low key, yeah. I, I prefer no a, bar- uh, a scarf <laughs> to a bonnet, yeah. I love a good scarf. Especially mm-hmm. when I'm going to bed. I feel like I look cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's no. what I'm saying. So it depends. I like the turbans, too, though. Oh, the little wrap-up? Yeah, oh, yeah, I fuck with those. Nigeria. I fuck with oh, those heavy. Yeah. yeah, I like the tires. Wow, that's mm-hmm. cute. I'm trying to think if I got it. I don't you even have no questions. questions. I've been asking questions. <laughs> 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 yeah. I've, I've, questions for a man. Let me think. I don't even like. See, why Why do I feel with this way? You know what I was going to say? I don't what? even like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's another. I'll be backing out. Don't worry. <laughs> we, we, this is, this is, this is uh, about hair, but we'll have as, other As much as women... Have things to work on, so do men. Mm-hmm. Men have to learn. Men have to learn the strategy of how to deal with a woman. Mm-hmm. Personally, you have to learn how to keep up with a woman. We are high maintenance. We have to agree to that. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of things that we have to take upon ourselves before we can even think about a man. Oh, I got a good one. I got a good question. Roll with it. 
So I've heard women tell me, for instance, because sometimes I'll ask women, from the point of view of a woman, how would you advise men in your life, maybe your brother, whatever the case may be, to differentiate women, right? And I've had women, for instance, tell me that, you know, if she wear French tips, she a hoe. So, you know, little things like that. <laughs> if she use uh, uh, tampons versus pads, she this, this, and that. I've heard what? different things like, yeah. So th- what I would say is, how, <laughs> what is something that men could look out for when it comes to how a woman wears her hair? Uh-huh. To differentiate if she's somebody worth, you know what I'm saying, kicking it with, or somebody, nah, she for the streets, or she dirty, or she this. Mm, that's good. It depends. Okay, so I could say it depends on your day. Like, okay, my day switch up and my outfit change. Mm. So maybe I'm at the gym, my hair is slicked back in a ponytail, but I'm also about to run to the grocery store and I look. The-